it's time. So today is the day that I'm finally going to show you my beauty buys from the US and I definitely bought a lot of things. I went to Sephora about four times, we went to Ulta as well, loved Ulta, and then also CVS, so for the drugstore bits that aren't available here in the UK. So I have this bag of goodies here which is pretty much full up. I've stuffed everything I could find in here and I've kind of waited a while to do this haul for you because I wanted to test everything out properly. So I didn't want to just go through a bag of stuff and say I bought this and this and this and not really have anything to talk about and tell you my thoughts and feelings about the product. So I've given them all a go and um, it's taken a while to really get through them all but I've found some really amazing gems, a few things that I was a little bit disappointed with as well so I will get to those later. But overall I'm definitely very happy with my US beauty haul so let's just dig into this bag. This could take a while. So I'm going to start with the bits that I got in Sephora, or at least try to pick those out of this bag. Um, and I'll start with a few skincare bits. So the first thing I got was the Kate Somerville Goat Milk Cream. I wanted to try this for a really long time. Actually, it's probably a common theme with everything that I picked up. I really wanted to try for ages and ages. So they were very kind of thought about purchases. I definitely have been meaning to pick these up for a long time. So this is a kind of everyday moisturiser. You can use it in the morning and the evening. And it has a really interesting lid. So instead of kind of scooping the cream out you kind of pump it um, and it comes out of this little plastic thing at the top which is at first I thought a really good idea so it's definitely more hygienic and you don't waste any product but actually it's really hard to control how much you're pumping and sometimes I'm left with a big splodge on the top that I don't end up using so in hindsight not the best packaging but I do like the overall kind of container that it comes in. I think it's very pretty, it looks nice on my bathroom shelf. I was surprised by the texture of this. I thought it would be a lot more hydrating and a lot thicker and richer for some reason, but it's actually very kind of slippery. It's almost quite lotion-like. I do like it though. It's probably not the best for really dry skin, but I think they do a separate range that is slightly more hydrating, but it's a really great day cream for underneath makeup. And I've been using this a lot and my skin has definitely felt very hydrated, very moisturized and no complaints here really. So. With any skincare item it kind of takes a while to really see a difference and if I've been changing up a lot of things in my routine I don't necessarily know what's causing the good skin but so far I really like this. And then I also got some bits from the Josie Moran range, Josie Marin, Josie Moran, something like that. Her skincare is really amazing, it was actually the Arganol that turned me on to this. Um, it's 100% organic Arganol, remember when Arganol was really in and everybody was using it? I still love oils, I use it on my hair, on my skin, so this is is a mini size and I actually got this in a set with three other products. So I also got the cleansing oil and then this one is the daily moisturiser with SPF 47 which is a very interesting number for an SPF to be. I really love all three of these. The cleansing oil is really nice, it's a very moisturising cleansing oil, it gets off my makeup really well and it definitely does kind of emulsify and mix with water really well once you try to take it off and some cleansing oils I find don't do that so this one I really really liked. I like the moisturiser as well, it's quite rich but it still feels like it sinks in really well into my skin and then I think the argan oil is probably my favourite. I've been using this on my my face, on my hair, on my hands and nails, pretty much everywhere that I want it. And I do really like it. The smell is kind of, it's kind of non-existent. It doesn't really have much of a smell, which I do kind of like because it doesn't mix in with anything else I'm using. So I'm really impressed with the Josie Moran range. And I did also pick up one more thing from her makeup products. This is so cute. This is from the little mini section when you queue up, which is definitely my favourite part of Sephora. I love that little section. There's so many amazing travel size products and things that you just feel like you have to buy because they're really small and really cute. This is one of the coconut water cheek jellies. I've wanted these for ages and it's just a really cute little cream blusher. And I do like to wear cream blusher in summer and I actually cracked this out while I was still in America and I was using it there. And it gives a really kind of dewy, nice glowy look to your cheeks, but it's a really interesting formula. It's definitely a gel. It's not a very sticky cream, so it sits really nicely on the skin. And the color that I got, which is Poppy Paradise, is a really different one. It looks pretty much red in the little tub here but it comes out like a very natural flush. I think this would be really nice for autumn winter as well because it's that kind of rosy cheeks just been walking outside in the cold kind of colour. I really like it. I wish I had bought a larger size now because in hindsight this little pot is pretty hard to dip your finger into or any brushes that you want to use to put on your cheeks but it's a really handy one for travel. Okay let's talk about makeup. 
where to begin, <laughs> seriously. I'll start with something that I've already talked about a little bit, um, and this is the Jaclyn Hill for Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Champagne Pop. I've already mentioned this in a favourites video, but I absolutely love it. It's such a beautiful, very golden, but also slightly peachy tone, but it works really great for pale skin, and I think Jaclyn designed it specifically for pale skins, which is amazing, because a lot of highlighters can look a little bit out of place on a fairer skin tone, but this one doesn't. It's really, really great. Absolutely love the texture of it. It blends in so beautifully, it's so finely milled, works really easily onto the skin, and I just think it's an amazing all-round product. It's definitely made me want to try out some more Becca bits as well, because it's not really a brand that I've really explored much or tried many things from. Another kind of powder product I picked up is actually from the Sephora own brand, and this is the Bright Set Pressed Finishing Powder, and I bought this because it's pretty much a bright yellow powder and I've been really interested in trying the kind of brightening, it's not quite contouring, it's like highlighting and contouring with a brighter powder. So I thought this would be a good first thing to try out. I really like the Sephora own range, I think they have some great quality products but they're all really reasonably priced which is great. So this I've been using kind of underneath my eyes to set my concealer and then on the high points of my face, so across my forehead, down my nose and it's a really interesting way to actually highlight your skin and give it a little bit of, what's the word? kind of definition and light points, I think something like that, I'm not an expert, but it works really nicely, it's very subtle, it's not like a shimmery highlighter at all, it's completely matte and it is just really a setting powder, but something about the yellow pigment and it really sort of just bounces off the light, it really sort of brightens underneath my eyes, I actually have it on today and it just looks a lot more lifted and a lot more light underneath there, which is always great because I'm always looking for something to do that underneath my eyes. And it's not cakey, it really doesn't look too heavy under there, it doesn't look like I've got a powder and a concealer and everything caked on. It just looks very kind of glowy and nice. It's a really lovely powder and definitely one that I'm impressed with. I wasn't expecting to be really wowed by this but I do really like it. Um, some more Sephora own brand stuff that I got. I picked up a few more of the cream lip stains. One of them I still can't find. I mentioned this in my August favourites and I'm gonna give up the search now. I think it's officially gone which is really sad. Although I can order these from the Sephora website so it should be okay because it was a really beautiful colour. I think it was called Mandarin something mandarin but it was a bright orange and it was just amazing but the one that I still have and haven't lost is Strawberry Kissed and this is a really very hot bright pink and I absolutely love it. Like I said before these formulas are amazing. I actually got something quite similar. This is what I'm wearing on my lips today for anybody that's wondering and this is one of the Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipsticks. This is in the colour Beloved and it's a really nice pink. I'd say it's kind of a natural pink but it's still quite bright but it's a nice your lips but better and bright brighter and pinker. In terms of the formulas of these compared to the Sephora ones, I have to say they might be just slightly better. I do love the Sephora ones, I think they're a lot more pigmented actually and they last a lot longer. But these are really quite moisturising for a liquid lipstick, which is a bit of a weird thing because liquid lipsticks are all completely matte and this one is very matte and it's really set on there, it's not going anywhere for a while. But it still feels quite hydrating and moisturising, which is really nice, so I like these. I only got one colour, but it is something that I'd want to try out maybe again in the future. I know Susie picked up quite a few of these while we were there and she absolutely loves them. Obviously one of the brands that I was really, really excited to buy a few things from while I was in America was Tarte. I think whenever I think of beauty brands in the US, I always think of Tarte as just the best and the one that I get most excited about really. I only managed to pick up one thing though, everything that I wanted and this was in all the Sephora's that I visited, I think we went to about four different ones, maybe two or three, was completely sold out so I wanted to get some more of the Amazonian clay blushes, I also wanted to get a concealer I think and quite a few other things but you just didn't have them so that was a little bit sad but I did pick up this one, Amazonian clay BB tinted moisturiser with SPF 20 and it's an oil free BB cream which just was music to my ears. I really love BB creams and lightweight bases at the moment so this one was just perfect for me and I decided to give it a go and I really like it. I got the shade light which is still a little bit on the orangey side for me and I found that was the kind of thing with a lot of the US beauty products is that they are quite yellowy toned and it's not that I go in for anything pink or anything like that, I just like a good neutral colour when it comes to base products and a lot of them were quite yellow. But it still works, it blends in really nicely and this is great because it is very sheer, it doesn't have a great deal of coverage to it, it's not something as covering as the Complexion Rescue from Bare Minerals which I love, um, but it's still a really nice one for just a very natural skin day and that's how I've been wearing it. So this one has been cracked out mostly on the weekends when I don't really want anything too heavy on my face. I also bought a primer, this took me so long to pick out, this is from Makeup Forever, it's their Step 1 Skin Equalizer Hydrating 
Beauty and Primer and Makeup Forever have recently, I say recently, it probably wasn't that recently at all, but they've brought out a range of primers and I think there's about seven or eight, maybe even more than that in there. And they're all for different skin types. So they have ones for dry skin, which is what this one falls under, ones for oily skin, really oily skin, really dry skin. And they also have color correcting ones. It took me a long time to decide which one I wanted, but I ended up going for step number one, which is the hydrating primer. So it's great for dry skin, but it's not the really, really thick, really rich one, which I thought would be a bit much underneath my makeup. It is so nice though. It's a very light, silky gel lotion almost, and it really does give an injection of moisture into your skin. I've kind of compared it to something like the Hyaluron Serum or the Sarah Chapman Intense Hydrating Booster. It definitely gives your skin that plumped feeling like those two do, but it doesn't leave any product or any stickiness on the top. In terms of making my makeup last, I have found that this does work really well. Not because it's a very sort of mattifying, very silky base, but more because it gives my skin an amazing texture to work on. So the makeup just works in better and it lasts longer on skin that is more hydrated, I guess. So this I've really been liking. I've been using it every single day since I got it and it's become a little bit of a staple in my makeup routine. Guys, we're not even halfway there. Let's see what else is in here. Um, this is from Hourglass. I've talked about this again a little bit since I got back. And this is one of their ambient lighting blushes. You all know I love these. I think they're just the best formula of blusher. And this is an incandescent Electra, which I have now recently seen in Liberty. So I'm guessing it has come to the UK now. But initially this was only in the US. It was a new colour. And I absolutely love it. I've kind of abandoned my other shades in these because I just love this one so much. It's a very pinky, peachy, corally tone but it's not quite as bright as the one that I was using before which was diffused heat which is a very ready coral. This one's just a bit lighter, a bit peachier but it's really really pretty and I think these formulas are just so nice for giving a very perfected, very glowy, pretty looking cheek colour. So this one I could not recommend enough, I think it's an amazing colour. Let's talk about some makeup tools. I bought three things in the end and these are all from Sephora. Two of them are brushes from the Sephora own range. I really love their brushes, I think they're great because they have a super long handle which is definitely inconvenient for travel, doesn't really fit in my makeup bag but for some reason I just like holding them, I feel like you get a bit more control with a longer handle. So these two are the Pro Air brush number 55, this is a foundation brush and it's a very kind of long tapered one, it feels very bendy, very flexible and it's actually very similar to the concealer brush that I love from Sephora which is the number 57 if I remember rightly. So I bought this thinking it would be really similar and just as good. I have to say I don't love it. I find that because it's a little bit longer and bendy you don't get as much control as I like to have with my brushes, especially as I like to apply foundation by kind of really stippling it in so I blend it and then I also really kind of work it into my skin because I don't really like to have too much product on my face. This one is a bit too bendy and flexible for that so it doesn't work it in the best but I think it works really nicely with very lightweight products. So something like the Tarte BB Cream, these two work together really nicely because it doesn't really need too much working in. But if you're going for a full coverage foundation, so I've tried this with my Charlotte Tilbury foundation, it just doesn't really work because that one needs a bit more of blending and a bit more moving around on the skin. So I'm kind of in two minds about this. I think it's great for lighter bases, but definitely not that great for more full coverage ones. And then the other brush I got was the Pro Crease number 10. Now this is an eyeshadow brush, but I picked it up because I wanted to use it with highlighter. I wanted something very precise and a little bit tapered to just use on my cheekbones and underneath my brow, down my nose, which is where I put my highlighter. And I've been using this with the Becca Jacqueline Hill highlighter. I think these two are an absolute dream together. They work so, so nicely. I just take a little bit of highlighter on there, tap the excess off and then kind of do little circles along my cheekbone and it gives a really nice precise application of highlight but you can still blend the edges out really well because this is quite a long brush it just blends everything really nicely so I'm very happy with that one. And then probably the most cliche beauty tool purchase that I made was a beauty blender. We had quite a debate as to whether or not we would buy one of these, me and the girls that I went to America with. I think Susie picked one up in the end, I don't think Rosie did but we all were kind of umming and ahhing over it. I'm so glad I ended up picking one of these up though because I think, and this might be a bit of a bold claim, but this has probably turned out to be my favourite thing from this whole haul. It just changes the way that your skin looks and I've used these in the past. I've used the kind of very similar things, so the Real Techniques one and a few other versions. But this one, for some reason, just does something different to my skin. It just makes it look 
absolutely airbrushed and poreless and just amazing and this I particularly love for concealer underneath my eyes. For concealer I usually use just a fluffy brush to kind of blend everything in but this just changes everything seriously. It makes my eyes look so much more brighter, it kind of makes the products a lot more pigmented, it doesn't leave any lines under there so there's no creasing with this because it really works everything into a nice thin layer and I find that I've been getting away with just wearing one concealer on its own, no corrector, no brightening concealer, just one concealer alone and that's been okay for me which is completely completely unheard of, I never used to be able to do that. But I really do think it's just the way that I've been applying it, so this has made an amazing difference. I really can't rave about it enough, but I just love it. I'm so glad I picked one up and I think it's definitely worth trying the original one, so rather than the copies that there are at the moment, because there's just something about this which is amazing. And I'm gonna put it down now and stop talking about it. Okay, I think I have the last two bits from Sephora here. Um, and the first one is a hair product. This is the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day. 5-in-1 styling treatment. I've been wanting this for so long. <laughs> Living Proof is quite available in the UK but for some reason this product hasn't made it here yet and I've really wanted to try it for ages because it just sounds like the perfect hair styling product. So it's a styling treatment that smooths, volumizes, conditions, strengthens and polishes. So you basically put this into your hair after you've washed it while it's still damp and then you can blow dry it or just leave it to dry naturally and it gives just everything that you could possibly want from a hair product. It leaves no frizz in your hair so it really kind of smooths it down it moisturises it and hydrates the ends especially but it also gives a little bit of thickness and volume and workability it makes things a lot easier to style and even if you've just left your hair to dry on its own it just makes it look better so healthier and it's sort of less wavy for me so if I do leave my hair to dry naturally some parts can be a bit straight some parts are really curly some bits are wavy and this just kind of makes it a bit more uniform and a bit nicer so it's definitely a bit of a wonder product they also do a shampoo and conditioner in this range which I'm kind of gutted I didn't pick up as well because I think the whole combination of all of them together would be amazing but I really really like it I really couldn't recommend this enough and it's probably the only thing that I've been using in my hair so I've been skipping all other hair products just doing shampoo conditioner and using this and it's made a lot of difference really to my hair so I'm really glad I managed to finally get my hands on one of these. And then the last thing is probably a little bit of a beauty blogger cliche to pick up from Sephora. It's the Elizabeth and James Nirvana Black Perfume. I think this is probably the first thing that I gravitated towards as soon as we got into Sephora. Probably the first thing that I put in my basket because oh my gosh this just smells so good. It's vanillary, definitely very vanillary. It's musky and it's very warm and nice but it's also very fresh at the same time. It's quite uplifting and refreshing and oh it just smells so good. It's one of those scents that just makes you feel very kind of cosy and nice and just good. It's just a good perfume, that's the only way I could think to describe it. I love the packaging of this as well, I think the bottle is amazing. They also do a white version of this, um, which is a lot more kind of florally and I didn't love that one. I still thought it was a really lovely scent, but this is definitely the one that I wanted to go for and I'm really glad I did. It doesn't last quite as long as I would love it to, although some perfumes do fade away on me quite quickly. I'm not sure why, but my skin just seems to absorb them. But I don't really mind respraying it and just using it over and over again throughout the day because it's just so nice. Okay, that is Sephora done. <laughs> not much left to go. Probably still quite a lot though. So next we have Ulta. I really liked Ulta. It was kind of a combination between Sephora and CVS. So you had some drugstore bits in there too, as well as more higher end things. But I just really liked the brands that they had there. They had Tarte, they had Urban Decay, Benefit, and they also had Lorac. So of course, Susie and I just ran. I think we actually ran straight to the Lorac stand and picked up one of these. Ah. So this is probably the thing that I most wanted to come back with and it's just such an amazing palette. It's got such a great range of colours in there and the formulas of these, oh my gosh the formulas, they are so good. So in here there are one, two, three, four, 16 colours and they range from a really amazing kind of colour range. So we have the light ones here, there's white cream, nude, champagne which are all very pretty light pastel-y colours. These two are matte, these two are shimmers. And then these ones are a little bit darker, a bit more bronzy. They have taupe here which I've almost completely run out of. That's a bit of an exaggeration but I have used this one so much. And then the slightly darker ones, mauve, pewter, sable, garnet. These two I've been using a lot underneath my eyes. I love the way that garnet looks underneath on the lower lash line. I just think because it's this sort of ready toned browny bronzy colour it really makes my eye colour pop. So I have kind of greeny hazily eyes 
and it just looks really nice underneath them. And then the really dark ones, which I've actually got so much use out of already, Espresso, Deep Purple, Slate, and then a black. And I love it when palettes have blacks in them, especially a matte black, because it's just so versatile. You can do so many things with it. I just think this is such an amazing palette. I think I could probably go without any of my other eyeshadow palettes and just stick to this, because it just has everything that you need. I wish this was more widely available. I'm not sure if you can even order this to the UK, but if you are in America and you have an Ulta nearby, you definitely take advantage and go and swatch this if you haven't yet already because it's just the best palette ever. Um, another brand that they had in Ulta that I was really interested in was It Cosmetics and I picked up this. It's the Your Skin But Better CC Cream, another CC Cream. This is the Colour Correcting Full Coverage Cream SPF 50 Plus. I love that it has SPF 50 in it and it is definitely full coverage. When they say that, they really do mean it and it's quite strange for a CC cream to be full coverage but it just gives your skin this amazing evenness. It really perfects everything. I went for the shade Fair which is probably slightly too light for me but I think in winter this will be perfect. I just love the way that it blends onto the skin. It goes on really well. It covers up any pores. just makes the texture of your skin look so lovely and so even but it also just gets rid of any redness, any blemishes, anything at all that you have to cover there. To the point where I don't even need concealer with this, it's just that full coverage but still really lightweight and really comfortable to wear which is a very interesting one. There really isn't anything like this on the UK market that I've really tried so this one I think is great especially if you like your lighter coverages but something that's going to give you a nice even skin tone. So that's everything that I picked up in Ulta and last of all let me get this out of the bag. CVS which I got very excited about. CVS was actually the first place we went. I think we'd been off the plane got to the house we were staying in and then half an hour later we were in CVS which was great. The first thing that I saw was the Maybelline stand. I picked up a few things from there. I got a couple of concealers. The first one is the Master Conceal by Face Studio Camouflaging Concealer. I hadn't seen this one before. It's a really good coverage concealer. It works really nicely around the face for blemishes and things. It's a little bit dry and a bit too cakey to have underneath my eyes, but I've been using this on any spots and blemishes, and it works really well for those. I kind of like the little tube it has to you because it's a very precise little point. It reminds me of the Makeup Forever Full Coverage Concealer, which is one of my favourites, so I like the packaging of this one. And then from good packaging to bad packaging, I also got the Instant Age Rewind Eraser Dark Circle Concealer. Now we do have this here in the UK, but the colours are absolutely awful, they're really really bad. Whereas this one I think is a very different shade, it's more of a light toned, almost quite pinky one, so it works really nicely underneath my eyes for cancelling out any darkness there. I've had one of these before and I actually pulled off the little spongy thing because it looked a bit gross and a bit unhygienic but I've actually been using it with the sponge this time and I do really like it. You kind of use it underneath the eyes and across the forehead and it just really blends in your concealer nicely. Obviously you then need to go in and blend it with something else but I find it applies a nice thin layer which is really great and the concealer itself is brilliant. It's a very kind of line smoothing, very perfecting one. It gives a nice blur to the skin which is always great underneath there so really like this one, having repurchased it. And then I also got the Instant Age Rewind Foundation from Maybelline, and they used to sell this here, and I think they actually stopped. And um, this is a slightly different one, it doesn't have the rollable on the end, it's just the kind of pour out normal foundation thing, which actually really annoys me. I hate these when they don't have pumps. But I absolutely love this. I thought it would be similar to the concealer in the way that it smooths out the skin, and it definitely is. It just goes on really lovely, really seamlessly, absolutely blurs out any pores you have on your skin, any fine lines. Just looks really great and very kind of fresh and flawless. I'm actually wearing this one on my face today, and I just really like the way it looks quite glowy and smooth and nice, but it also stays put for a really long time and just lasts well on my skin. So this has been a bit of a standout in terms of the base products that I bought, which I'm really surprised by. Um, and then I also got this, which again has been helping my foundation stay a lot longer. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Spray and Set Makeup Extender setting spray, that has a long name. This is from the same range as the Infallible 24 Hour Foundation, which I'm a big fan of. And it's actually being sold next to it on the L'Oreal stand, so I thought I'd pick it up and give it a go. And I really like it. I've never been too much of a fan of things like the MAC Fix Plus Spray and the Urban Decay version as well, but for some reason I've just been using this one a lot and I really like it. This definitely came in so handy in the heat in America. My makeup would have sweated off a lot sooner if I hadn't been wearing this one, so it's a really good one for setting everything down. If you don't love to use a powder or if you don't really like to cake it on. The main thing I've been using this for though is with the Beauty Blender. I've been spraying this on first to kind of dampen it down so it doesn't absorb too much product and then kind of blotting it onto my skin and I find the combination of 
this product and then using it with the Beauty Blender just makes everything set in a bit better. So the setting spray kind of gets blended into my foundation and my concealer and I just think they're a really good duo to use together. So any setting spray as well I think would work well with this. I think that is pretty much everything apart from NYX and I went a bit crazy with the NYX lip products. I say crazy, I bought four things, that's not too bad. So I got kind of a range from the different NYX lip products and I have tried some of these in the past and really like them so I was very excited to see a few more colours to try out so I got two of the matte lipsticks, I got one of the soft matte lip creams and then one of the butter glosses. Now the butter gloss is probably my least favourite of all of them just because I think I went for the wrong colour. This one is creme brulee which I thought would be a really nice nude colour but I think it's probably a bit too nude on me to wear on its and I think if you're wearing a nude lipstick maybe this would be nice on top but the formulas of these are lovely they're really quite moisturizing they're not sticky in terms of a lip gloss they're still quite glossy and they're always going to be a little bit sticky but they're not anywhere near as bad as some of the other lip glosses I've tried in the past they're just really nice and they make your lips look very plumped so I do really like that one just not loving the color and then the soft matte lip cream is probably my favorite of everything I love the formulas of these they kind of remind me of a few things that we have here in the UK but the color range is amazing I went for the shade Antwerp which is a really amazing bright pink it's kind of similar to what I have on my lips today but it's a little bit more bright and bubblegum pinky but I really really like it and then the two matte lipsticks I got the first one is Indie Flick I have been absolutely raving about this since I got it I think it may have become one of my top at least top three favorite reds I think it's just an amazing really bright very orangey red color and then I also picked up this one which is perfect red which is kind of a bit more of a deep more kind of classic bluey toned red which I still really love as well but I just absolutely love NYX lip products I wish they sold them here because I think they're so great so affordable as well I think these are all about five dollars maybe four dollars which is probably what two or three pounds so these are definitely one of my standouts from all my purchases really really love them okay I think we're finally done that definitely took a while how long have I been filming for only an hour not too long <laughs> I'll have to kind of condense this down to some more reasonable to manage chunk of video for you but I hope you enjoyed watching that let me know if you've tried any of these bits yourself if any of these are your favorites or if you've picked them up from Sephora as well or if you think there's anything that I missed that I should have picked up maybe for another trip which could be happening sometime in the future or you know just the late night Sephora splurge online so give this video a like if you liked it and subscribe if you are new and I will see you all soon. Bye!